For our Project 2 assignment, we are making a rectilinear construction. In order to do this, we're using scanned in images for the front view and the top view that act as underlays to create a front extrusion and a top cut to finish our shape. This video will show how to properly create these images and how to port them into SOLIDWORKS. This project was originally created in your Foundations class. Here what I've done is brought up original sketch that was used to make the actual physical model and into Photoshop. What this has is the front view and the top view all in one image shown as ortho orthographic projections. So we see that the full length of the front view is identical to the full length in the top view since these represent the same features on the model. However, the height of the front view is not necessarily going to be the same as the width on the top view because these represent two different features. Our goal is to get this split up into two separate image files, one for the front one for the top so they can be brought into SOLIDWORKS on separate planes and also to split them up in such a way that they are nice and tight around just the actual usable image that we need for SOLIDWORKS. That way the width of our image file and the height of our image file is going to match the maximum width of the actual black lines in that image and the maximum height of the black lines located on that image, which will make things more convenient when we bring it into SOLIDWORKS. To split this up, we want to make two copies of this image so that in one copy we can crop everything out except for the front view, and in the other copy we're going to crop everything out except for the top view. So here we see I've made it my copy already, which I'm going to be using for the front view. I'm assuming that this was scanned in a one-to-one -one scale, and if I go to my image size up in the image menu here, I see that the total file size is 10 inches wide, a height of 6.382, and it's at a slightly odd resolution of 144 pixels per inch. I know that the actual image on this 10 inch wide picture is not a full 10 inches long and I can find out what that actually is by using my measure tool and it will just click here near this endpoint of this image. I'm going to click up here to the corner because that represents where the maximum height of this image is located. So I'll click right about here where some convenient lines have been drawn. And I can see now that the image is about 9.222 inches wide and 2.539 inches high. I can see that this point here goes a little bit beyond this line and I can see that this top of this curve goes a little bit below this line so I'm just going to round this out to 9.23 no 9.24 inches wide and about 2.53 inches high. So the easy way to do this then is to select my selection window, my rectangular mark key tool and I'm going to use the fixed size option and I've already got it typed in here. I'm going to type in a width of 9.24 inches and a height of 2.53 inches. When I click in the window what it does is it brings up the dotted lines that exactly fit the size that I want the window to be. I'm going to position this so that this corner lines up down here and utilize image crop and what this does is crops my image very tightly around the black lines that I want to use in SOLIDWORKS. Now if I go back up to image, image size, I see that even though I had set the marquee for 9.24, it's come up with a slightly weird dimension of 9.236 and a height of 2.528. That's probably because of this weird resolution we originally had. So what I'm going to do is uncheck resample image size so that this bracket 
is affecting all three parameters. And on the width, which I want to be exactly 9.24, I'm just going to type in 9.24. This is almost exactly 2.53 now. You see the resolution has become kind of an odd number. And then I'm going to check this again, which is going to lock these in place, but allow me to change this number. And what I want to do is just change this to a slightly more convenient resolution, like 100 pixels per inch. Hit OK. So that made the image file a little bit smaller. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Go back to image and check it out one more time. Now we see we've got a file that's exactly 9.24 by 2.53 with a resolution of 100. You can of course use an image file of much higher resolution than this, but you have to remember that even if this is saved as a JPEG, SOLIDWORKS has to uncompress the file when it inserts it and the file will become very big as a result. So just go with whatever resolution you can get away with. Now I'm just going to save this. And I've saved this as a JPEG file. It could be saved as other formats as well. It could be saved as a TIFF or a GIF or whatever. JPEG is uh, pretty convenient. And you also notice it says gray here. Since these are all just black lines, another way to save space on this file is just to save it as a black and white image. So you can always go up to image mode gray and make sure that this is in grayscale rather than in RGB color. I've brought up my orthographic projection view one more time. Now what I need to do is make an image for the top view. We probably already have the numbers set in our marquee from before. Fixed size 9.24, 2.53. So I'll just drag this up here. And we do see one little problem, whereas the height of the marquee is incorrect because the width of this object is not the same as the height in the front view. So I'm going to escape out or control D out of that. And I'm just going to measure what the height of this is and reset the marquee for that. So going to measure tool, take a vertical measurement, and we see that the height of this is will round it out to 2.08 inches. So reselect the marquee, set the height to 2.08. Now we can drag this around, get this lined up. You might have to use your arrow keys to move it around. You see that this is lined up with this point, which is in alignment with this point here. And this is in alignment with the tail here. Horizontals are lined up with the maximum height here and the minimum height here. Then we'll just go ahead, image, crop. Now we have a new image that's tightly cropped around the top view. Control D out of that to get rid of the selection marquee. And once again, we'll go to image size. We still have this funny resolution of 144. The width, once again, is rounded out to a 2.36 inches. So I'm going to uncheck resample size so that I get the triple bracket. Type in 9.24. Recheck resample image size, so I only get the double bracket, and then type in the resolution that I want, 100. Let's reduce the resolution. I'll zoom in a little bit. And I'll just double check this one more time. I'll check image size. Now we see we have a nice clean image of 9.24 wide, 2.08 high, and a resolution of 100. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that as well. Save that as a JPEG. Make this one call it a top view underlay. And make sure that when you save these files that they're saved in baseline format, not in progressive format. And that's it for creating your images. And the next step is to bring them into SOLIDWORKS. Now getting back to SOLIDWORKS, what we want to do is get that front view on our front plane and that top view on our top plane. I'm just going to roll this back to hide everything. And on our front plane, I'm going to draw a sketch. 
And then I'm going to go to Tools, Sketch Tools, down at the bottom, which unfortunately is below the edge of our video screen, we're going to go all the way to the bottom. Second to the bottom says Sketch Picture. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to browse to one of the images that I created. So in this case, I want the curvilinear front view underlay that I created a few minutes before. Open. And that drops in my image at a really huge scale. And you see instead of the 9.24 that we are expecting, it's some weird number, 36 point whatever. The reason for this is that SOLIDWORKS automatically drops images in at a scale of 10 pixels per centimeter. But we don't need to worry about this at all as long as we know what size we want the image to be. Make sure that lock aspect ratio is checked so that if we scale down the width, the height scales down automatically. Simply type in that 9.24 that I know I want this to be. And that perfectly scales everything exactly the way I want it. So not only is it 9.24 wide, but it brings it back down to the 2.53 high. We have a couple of other controls here. We have an X position and a Y positioning of the image. So if I click on these arrows, you see I can move this back and forth in the X direction, and I can move it up and down in the Y direction. In this case, I do want this point that's in the image to be right on my origin. And because it automatically drops the picture onto the origin at the left corner, there's no need for me to move this. Now you can see why it was important to crop this back very tightly around the image lines that we desire, because this way we automatically get this point that's part of my image lines automatically lined up with my origin. If I'd left an extra border around this picture, I would have to manipulate it with the X and Y positions in order to get this point lined up with the origin and I wouldn't necessarily know what size to make this when I brought it into SOLIDWORKS because the size here represents the size of the border of the image, not necessarily the size of the image contained within. In our case, both are the same thing, so we don't have to worry. So here's, we'll finish the sketch. So we've got a sketch. And if I hit the plus sign, we see we have a sketch picture inside of that. I'm going to double click on this, which brings up the parameters for the sketch picture again. We see here, once again, we have the X and Y position, the size, and uh, we even have an angle control if we like. But what I want to do is make this partially transparent so that later on when I'm sketching on top of this, these dark lines don't obscure the lines I'm trying to draw. Go to full image. Here I get a transparency control. Usually I like to drag this somewhere in the neighborhood of 0.8. And this gives me a semi-transparent image. So if later on I'm going to go sketch on it, and I would like to recommend that even though you could sketch on this picture inside Sketch 2 here, it's better to do it on a separate sketch altogether so that this sketch picture can be turned off independently of anything that you trace over it. So here on the front plane I'm going to draw a completely new sketch. You see that as I'm sketching on top of this, I don't have to worry about these lines being so dark that it would make it hard for me to see the blue lines that I'm sketching over it. I won't sketch the whole thing here. I'll finish the sketch but show you that by putting the tracing sketch 3 in a separate sketch from sketch 2, it allows me, if I want, to separately hide my sketch picture while keeping the sketch that was traced over it visible. I'm just going to finish this up by bringing in my other sketch picture. So on the top plane, I'm going to draw a new sketch. I'm going to go ahead and show this sketch again. And once again I'm going to say insert, I'm sorry, tools, sketch tools, sketch picture. 
This time I'm going to use my top view underlay, hit open. Just like before, in this orientation of our sketch, it's going to take the lower left hand corner of the sketch and align it with the origin. And once again, we get this weird dimension here. Just change this to 9.24. That's going to scale it down to the dimension we want. We also have a situation here where this point in the top view is the same as this point in the front view. And we have this point in the front view aligned with the origin. It would be nice if this point in this top view image was lined up with the origin as well. So I'm going to double click on that image using the Y positioning. I can move this image down until this point in the image is approximately lined up with the origin. You might have to type in a number just to get it just right and we're just doing this by eye because this is a JPEG image that has no relations to any sketch elements so there's no way to necessarily get that perfectly in the right place. However, when we sketch on top of it, there's no reason why our sketch lines can't have a coincident relation to the origin. Then once again, I'll just double click on this again. I'm going to go to full image, set the transparency to about 0.8, finish my sketch. Now I have a front view sketch, or front view image rather, and a top view image. Front view, top view and I'm ready to then start sketching on top of these to create the rest of my curvilinear construction.